Okay, pre-algebra, we're doing guided and independent practice, both of them in one day. Uh, and then you'll have a test on Thursday. You'll have homework tonight, page 27 and 28. Uh, and today we're just gonna go over the stuff that we've been talking about this whole chapter. We're gonna start with showing that how to change a repeating decimal to a fraction. All right, so the decimal that we have is 0 0.74. Now remember that I told you the first thing you have to do is write a let statement. So we're gonna write a let statement. We're gonna say let x equal 0 0.74 repeating. Again, we, we say the let statement so we can define our variable, right? Because the whole key is we can't do anything if we don't define our variable. So we define our variable as x is equal to 0.74. Now we're going to write an equation where we're going to say x equal 0.74, repeating. You can put a zero in front of it if you want. And then we want to get rid of the 0.74. Well, how can we do that? Well, we look at the decimal places. We're in the tenths and the hundredths place, all right? So we're going to multiply both sides by 100 so we can get rid of this decimal. So we're going to say 100 times x is equal to 100 times 0 0.74 repeating. That gives us 100x is equal to 74.74 repeating. All right, because if you multiply 100 by that, we're just moving the decimal point over two, but it's repeating. So really this 0.74 goes like this, right? So if I move it over, I get 74.74 repeating. Now, I wanna get rid of this 0.74. So I subtract it from this side, 0.74 repeating. And up here, I said that X is equal to 0.74. So all I have to do now is subtract x from this side. I'm actually taking the same thing from both sides because I defined x as 0 0.74 repeating. So this x is actually, and I'm taking it from here also, but I'm taking it as x. So that leaves me 99x is equal to 74. Now I just gotta solve for x. So I divide both sides by 99, and I get x is equal to 74 over 99. And that is how you change a repeating decimal to a fraction, okay? Now we did this the other day with uh, 0.3, and we did it with uh, 0.512 repeating. All that matters is you count the decimal places, and that's what you multiply it by, right? And then solve for x, all right? Now, the second question on this page is a circle has a circumference of three pi inches. Is it possible to state the exact circumference of that circle, right, as a decimal? So a circle has a circumference of three pi inches. Is it possible to state the exact length of the circumference as a decimal? And you have to explain. Well, pi, pi is irrational, all right? Which means that it goes on forever and never ends and never repeats. So it doesn't matter if you multiply by a number, a whole number or not. Three pi is actually three times 3.14159 and a bunch of other numbers that just keep on going. So we never know exactly what that number is. So the answer to this question is no. No. Pi is irrational. Right? Pi is irrational. Multiplying by three just gives a larger irrational number. So 
So if we multiply by three, we just get a bigger irrational number. Because an irrational number, does, it never ends, so we never know the exact value. All right? Everybody get that? Everybody understand it? If not, uh, when I come back tomorrow, we'll talk about it. All right. So the next question, they want you to draw a Venn diagram. All right, so let's talk about what a Venn diagram is. A Venn diagram showing the relationships among the following sets of numbers. Integers, irrational numbers, natural numbers, rational numbers, real numbers, and whole numbers. Well, first, out of these categories, which one is the biggest? Well, we know that the real numbers, right? We know that real numbers are the largest one, right? So we're going to put those up here. Put real numbers. Because real numbers take up every number. It doesn't matter what they look like. All right? So then we're going to draw this Venn diagram. All right? And we're going to split it down the middle. On this side, we're going to put the rational numbers. Right? And on this side, we're going to put the irrational numbers. All right, so that are, those are the next two big categories. Rational numbers, irrational numbers. Then the next biggest category, and we can mark those off as we go, right? So we've used real numbers already, we've used rational numbers, and we use irrational numbers. The next category is gonna be integers, right? So this, this one right here takes up all this space right here. The next one, it's right underneath that, takes up a little less space, is called integers. All right, and we know that the integers are all the numbers that start at zero, start at zero, and they go in both directions, right, for infinity, but they only include the numbers that are not fractions or decimals, right? So integers are a little bit smaller set the rational numbers, because rationals include fractions and decimals, right? So in this case, let's say rational numbers are 0, 1 half, negative 1 half, positive 1 half, and so forth and so on in, in both directions. Here, integers start at 0, go 1, 2, 3, and negative 1, negative 2, negative 3 in this direction, all right? So they go in both directions. The next numbers that we have are the whole numbers. Right, so underneath the integers comes the whole numbers. Whole numbers. Whole numbers start at zero and go one, two, three, on out to infinity. They're a little bit smaller set than the integers, right? They're about a half. Right, because integers go negative also, but whole numbers don't. And that leaves one more number, one more set of numbers, and those are called the natural numbers, right? They go here, natural. Now, before, before we go any further and tell you what the natural numbers are, they have another name, we're gonna put that in parentheses, and that's called the counting numbers. So natural numbers are also known as the counting numbers. Counting numbers start at one. One, two, three, so on. Well, actually, it's supposed to be three. The ellipses is three dots, all right? So, the difference is no zero, right? No zero. So your Venn diagram should look something like this. And if you want to make this, you know, like that, you can. Technically, it should be like that, but, you know, that's our Venn diagram. Each one getting progressively smaller, irrational and rational. These are all the, the ones that are like pi, right, 2 pi, you know, 
So those kind of numbers, any of the square root of two, square root of five, any square that is not perfect. So non-perfect squares, right? Non-perfect squares, right? All right, any questions on this so far? Then you just holler at me and say, hey, what's going on? All right, the next problem, we're gonna to go to the next page. This problem, all we're gonna do is kind of put together everything that we know. And we're gonna, I'm gonna leave this up here the way it is, except I'm gonna take this stuff out, right? And I'm going to leave this little block diagram. All right? So what we're going to do is determine I have a bunch of numbers. Which ones go where? All right, so we're going to determine rational numbers and irrational numbers. We have a whole bunch of numbers up here, right? So let's just start with the first one. We have the square root of 50. Is the square root of 50 a perfect square? Well, no, because a perfect square is 49, right? And 64, the square root of 50 is between those. So the square root of 50 goes over here in the irrational number column, right? 3.456. 3.456 is a repeating decimal and repeating decimals go here. So 3.456 with the 5, 6 repeating go in the rational number columns. Zero. Zero is a rational number, right? Because it's, it's not a fraction. It's actually part of the whole numbers, right? Actually, yeah, it's part of the whole numbers. It's part of the real numbers. Right? It's part of the integers, all right? Then we have this one here, the square root of four ninths. All right, so just to make sure we understand, you can rewrite this as the square root of four over the square root of nine. You want to take, anytime you take the square root of fraction, you take the square root of the numerator, you take the square root of the denominator. So this becomes equal to two over three. That is a, fraction, right? A ratio written as a fraction, which means it goes over here. So in this column, the square root of 4 over 9 will go over here, right? 0 0.38. 0 0.38 is a terminating decimal. Terminating decimals go in the rational file because, remember the definition of a rational number. A rational number is a number that can be written as a ratio of two integers, a number that can be written as a terminating decimal, or a number that can be written as a repeating decimal. Right? The next number is the square root of 81. The square root of 81 is a perfect square. 9 times 9 is 81, so the square root of 81 goes right here. All right? So, so far, we're doing all right. All right? And then we got two pi. Well, remember pi is irrational. So no matter what you do to pi, you're gonna get another irrational number. If you multiply by two or you divide it by two, doesn't matter, it's gonna be irrational. So two pi goes over here, All right? And then we have the square root of 1.69. This is where you have to be a little bit careful because the square root of 1.69 is actually the square root of 1.69 is actually equal to 1.3, which is a terminating decimal, all right? And a terminating decimal goes over here. So the square root of 1.69 goes right there, all right? And then we have the square root of 2 ninths. Well, we can do the same thing that we did with this one, all right? We can change that to a two, right? And that gives us the square root of two over the square root of nine, right? Well, the square root of nine is three, but the square root of two 
is irrational numbers and we can't, square root of two is irrational. We can't get that to a number that doesn't repeat or terminate, right? So the square, this number here, the square root of two over nine will go in the irrational column. Uh, I hope that makes sense to everybody and then you understand how to tell the difference, right? Remember if it repeats, terminates, or can be written as a fraction, then it is a rational number. Irrationals are numbers that cannot be written as a fraction, cannot be written as a repeating decimal, and cannot be written as a terminating decimal. All right. Now, part B says to circle a number that you said was rational and explain how. Well, I'm going to say circle this one, right? And what we can say is how we decided it was rational, 0.38 is a terminating decimal. And that's all you have to say for that, right? Because terminating decimals are rational, right? Part C says circle one, numbers, one of the numbers you said was irrational, all right? So I can say, uh, 2 pi, right, and 2 pi means 2 times pi, pi is irrational, because it never repeats and does not terminate. So if you put that, then you're good for that one too. All right. Then it wants us to draw a number line and write a statement, right? I'm going to erase this. It wants to draw a number line with the two numbers that we have selected, which was 0.38 and 2 pi, and put them on a number line. All right, so let's do that, and then we'll be done for today. All right, so draw a number line. We're going to do that. All right, and our number line, we're going to put 0, 1, 2, Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Close enough for government work. All right. And then I'm going to put 0.38, which is about right here. Here's 0.38. All right. And I want to put two times pi. Well, pi is 3.14. Get it. That's what we rounded off to. So we're going to be about 6.28, which is about right here. And that's approximately equal to 6.28, right? But they want us to write it at 2 pi. So we're going to put 2 pi right here, right? And then we're going to compare them, right? So we're going to say since 0.38 is here between 0 and 1, and 2 pi is between 6 and 7, obviously 0.38 is less than 2 pi. And that's your statement that we're looking for. That's your number line that we're looking for. All right. Again, your homework tonight is page 27 and 28. And we will talk more about this stuff when I get back on Thursday before we take the quiz. All right. If you have any questions, feel free to email me. Remember, you also have iReady homework this week. 45 minutes plus you need to pass a quiz. All right, and I will see you guys on Thursday.